I think it is a momentous moment in the recent history of this island. As uh, Joe was explaining, Northern Ireland has only existed for 101 years, but for the duration of that time, Unionists have been to the fore at Stormont. They've held sway there. No one really for a very long time could have possibly envisaged a day when an Irish Nationalist Party that doesn't even recognise Northern Ireland's existence would be uh, in the position to nominate a first minister. That does two things. It opens up a huge debate about whether or not there will be a power-sharing government going forward because, of course, Michelle O'Neill from Sinn Féin will need a unionist partner in that government if it is to proceed. But the big question is, what has this done to the constitutional question of Northern Ireland's place in the United Kingdom? Many believe it has hastened the day when there will be a referendum on Northern Ireland potentially leaving the United Kingdom and reuniting with the rest of Ireland. My report on this momentous day contains flash photography from the beginning and throughout. This is Lucy, by the way. A new kind of politics for a new generation. We're mentoring her. This is the future. The Sinn Féin leadership had come to celebrate history in the making, the election of an Irish nationalist first minister. Today ushers in a new era, which I believe presents us all with an opportunity to reimagine relationships in this society on the basis of fairness, on the basis of equality and on the basis of social justice. Michelle O'Neill knows the plates have shifted, that her victory could pave the way to a referendum on Irish unity. Michelle, a defining moment, a new era. What does this mean for the constitutional question of Northern Ireland's place in the United Kingdom? Well, I'm very pleased to report that there is a very healthy conversation already underway. And I've always said throughout the election campaign that regardless of the outcome of the election, that conversation was going to continue. Those of us that are for unification will make that case. I encourage those that actually don't have that perspective at this moment in time to also enter into the conversation. Let's have a healthy debate about what our future looks like, something that's better for each and every one of us. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson and his predecessor were keen to present a united front. The Democratic Unionists must now decide if they'll accept this democratic process, but they're looking to Downing Street. What do you need from Boris Johnson right now? Well, to be honest, David, what we need is action. Uh, words are good, but what we need that, uh, to happen is that those words are followed up by action, decisive action by the government to remove the Irish Sea border because we don't believe it is acceptable or necessary to ch have checks on goods moving within the United Kingdom. IRA violence like the Schenkel bombing saw Sinn Féin banned from the airwaves at the height of the troubles here. The elevation of its political wing is difficult for victims. But Alan McBride, whose wife died in the attack, wants Northern Ireland to move on. Well, they, they have a past and let's not forget about that. I mean, they have come from violence and from being undemocratic to being democratic and for, to try to make the peace process work. And I think you have to recognise that journey. But that's not to say that you just can, you know, forgive and forget and move on. I, I, that's very, very difficult for people. It is an undeniable truth that Northern Ireland is a unique complicated and often dysfunctional place. It really only works when unionists and nationalists share power, as envisaged by the Good Friday Agreement. And when that doesn't happen, the people have no government. Some think it's time for a new political structure, one that isn't dependent on just two parties pulling together. Well, it's going to be difficult, but the Alliance surge puts the pressure on government to say actually this system is no longer fit for purpose and we should be reviewing it because for the people of Northern Ireland it shouldn't be a choice between no government and bad government. The government should be there to deliver for the people. Michelle O'Neill says she'll be at her desk in Stormont on Monday ready to tackle the bread and butter issues that matter most. David Blevins, Sky News, Macrofelt.